everybody. Today the sun is shining, it's absolutely beautiful, amazing, bright blue skies, wonderful sun, lifts the spirits, I love it, I'm sure everybody else does. The only trouble is, of course, what we do need to address is the fact that the sun is actually the number one enemy of our skin. We really, really need to look after our skin when the sun's out, even when it's not. If you've ever seen any of my um, appearances on Tijan's channel before, or uh, when I've written on her blog, I've gone on about SPF in a big way, it's my massive thing, um, and with good reason, and I'll explain that. So today I am going to go through some of my favourite SPFs. I'm actually including one as well that I'm not so keen on, uh, which was a mistake by, but I kind of think it's useful to put that in as well. So I'm going to uh, show you my products, and we're going to start off with one of my absolute favourites. It's La Roche-Posay 50 Plus and Thelios XL. It's a sheer, quite light um, uh, formulation, which is really easy to rub in and leaves a nice gleam. Doesn't feel greasy, but it does feel moisturizing on the skin. I think this would work equally well for combination skins, even though mine's really dry. Um, I will always put SPF on after having put a serum and a day cream. So SPF should be the last step pre, if you're going to be putting on any um, tinted moisturiser or any foundation, it should be the final step before you do that. Or just the plain old SPF if you're not going to put anything else on, which should work fine, especially with the tinted ones, which is what I'm going to come to now. They also do a tinted version. Uh, exactly the same brand. La Roche-Posay really have got um, uh, some <clears throat> sun protection sewn up. Again, it's 50. It's exactly the same. Um, and there are two different um, uh, colours of the tint. I use the lighter one, but there's a darker one as well. And you can actually use both and mix them because although the tubes look quite hefty in size, you get through a lot, you should get through a lot of SPF on your face every day. These aren't the kind of SPFs that you only apply once, they do have to be reapplied every three hours ideally. Um, so this, if I don't know if you can see, I've just rubbed it into my hand, it's a lovely tint, I'm wearing this today actually, um, it creates a lovely gleam and um, moisturising again. There it is on the back of my hand and a really, really lovely formulation that gives good coverage but doesn't really look as if you've, in fact, it just looks like your skin but better and of course it's protected so, you know, you can, you're can a win-win situation there. Uh, as you can see, I'm really going on about La Roche-Posay and Thelios here. Here's the third, third incarnation of this product. It is a compact in a cream form. It's a little bit thicker and it has the um, sponge applicator as well. So you've got, uh, this is great for touching up in the day. So you can put the tinted um, SPF on first thing in the morning and to save carrying that tube around with you if you're out and about, this is a perfect way to touch up. You've got the mirror, obviously, to be able to see. And this is actually, being a little bit thicker and stronger, it's almost a little bit like a concealer. I've got, oops, I've just got a little bit of eyeliner on my forehead there, which I've just rubbed off, probably in the video all the way through. Um, so I've got a little bit of pigmentation here on my forehead. So I'm just putting a little bit on here. And although it is a only a tinted SPF, it does give quite good coverage if you're wanting to cover up. So another winner there. Um, I'll link below these three products. They are amazing. The reason why I'm so passionate about SPF is my skin. I've had some really bad issues with sun exposure over the years. And when I say exposure, I have never actually put my face in the sun. I don't sunbathe because I'm really prone to pigmentation. That's when your skin reacts with the sunlight, often with hormonal changes as well, and literally, sometimes it will go one of two ways. You'll get white patches or dark patches. And when I was uh, pregnant with my third pregnancy, happened with my second, third, and fourth, not with my first, because actually the latter months of pregnancy were in the winter, so there wasn't any sun, and that's why I didn't get any uh, reaction. 
But in my third pregnancy, I remember falling asleep in the garden about two or three days before Lily was due to be born and before she was born. And I was really exhausted. This, it was unseasonally warm. It was early April and it just felt so lovely and relaxing. And I fell asleep in the garden, not meaning to, and woke up and looked at my face and it looked as if somebody had smeared Marmite all over my cheeks here and across my forehead and on my chin. It was really, really strong stain on my face. I'd had something similar with my previous pregnancy with Cengiz a couple of years before, just a little patch on the top of my nose, but I really didn't expect this to happen. And that actually became my quest for wanting to reverse pigmentation and it made me really understand and realise the necessity to stay out of the sun. I always had up until then and I always did use SPF but only when I felt the, I was on holiday or the, the sun was really strong. Now the culture's changed and people are doing now what I have been doing for the last 25 years which is wear SPF all day every day and actually keep their face out of the sun on holiday big hat, sunglasses, it's the only way actually to protect your skin and not to have to deal with all of these issues getting to your late 20s, early 30s and having to try to reverse the signs of all of this horrible sun damage. So if anybody under the age of 20 is actually watching this video and if you are I'd be really gratified I have to say but take my advice because the best piece of advice I can give to anybody in their late teens is to put the SPF on your skin and you will really thank me for that advice. I know we read about it and it kind of goes in one ear and out of the other till you have personal experience of skin damage and sun damage. I don't think it's something people really take on board when they're very young. I, I did by just the sheer fact I didn't actually like sunbathing and then when I had this problem it reinforced it even more to me so I always kept my face out of the sun and protected it so I am able now to enjoy skin that is strong and firm and not pre-aged because of exposure to the sun simple anyway to go back to products the um, other one which I think is an amazing one it's by Ultra Sun Face 50 this one is, they, it's 50 plus, they, they have different levels of plus plus, anything over 50 really I don't think um, is able to pr provide one with any more coverage, 50 is pretty much about the most it gets without the chemicals factor going sky high. This one is a little more white, um, all those years ago when I was trying to find um, sun protection which was strong. I unfortunately had to put up with really white, zinky, strong, um, almost like a sort of greasy film. I used to do it because obviously I needed to because the, the consequences were so bad that my skin would, would react and I would get this terrible pigmentation. But nevertheless, uh, it's so much easier now to find products that don't have this strong white film because retailers and, and um, the cosmetics industry understand that women need to protect their skin and they are bringing out formulations that are lighter and lighter and they don't have this strong white sheet. So this one is, a, as I said, it's got a little bit more of the white. You do have to rub it in a bit more, but it feels stronger and it feels very nourishing. I believe as well that this brand do a one a day application. I think they do, so you only need to put it on once a day. Uh, again, I'm not sure whether I'd entirely believe once a day is enough. You probably should put it on once and then maybe again in the afternoon if you really want to, if you're, if you're out and about in the sun properly. I have to say, I live my life now so much so that when I'm in a room with big windows um, and in my house my kitchen has a lot of light, I'll put SPF on in the morning before I go down and do my chores and let the dog out and put the kettle on and generally just start getting everybody together for the day because of the sunlight streaming in and the sunlight uh, will will catch our faces at any time just walking along the street. That's why hats are a really great thing or big glasses but that cover the majority of your face. To be honest the sun really just gen generally hits this part of your cheekbones. That's why this um, pregnancy mask as they call it, cloasma, tends to be around this area. It's where the sun hits the face and reacts with the hormonal element 
but as I said, it can happen to anybody. It doesn't just have to remain a pregnancy-related issue. I think it can happen when people are taking a strong dose of the uh, pill and other uh, hormonal factors. So it's not something that you can gauge whether or not it might happen. So the only answer is really just look after your skin and protect it fully. So another product which I've had to track down because this was an absolute favourite of mine and believe me when I tell you this is an absolute wonder product. It's by Make, it's called SunPass um, Mountain Expert SPF 50. So it's uh, extreme sports, skiing, mountaineering, um, and uh, I came across this when it was stocked in boots about five years ago and whenever a new high protection SPF came out I would always trial it and see if I liked it and I've gone through many over the years of the Nivea or La roche posay or um, there's a couple of other French pharmacy brands sometimes they're too drying sometimes I don't feel they give enough of a um, coverage, sometimes they're a little bit grainy, but this one was like a uh, an epiphany moment. It's called um, Radiant Complexion Cream, and it is an SPF, but you put it on and it has this lovely tinted um, formulation, and as you let it sink into your skin, it's the sort of colour that actually goes, melds to any skin tone. So this will work for a paler skin than mine and mine and a much, much darker skin. Uh, both my daughters use this and it's, it, it works for them. After a minute or so, what happens is there's a pigment in it which will come out and be a little bit stronger. And when I put it on, I actually look as if I've got some fake tan on or um, uh, a, a sort of bronzer all over my face. The coverage is amazing, the, the formulation is really creamy and really rich and it just makes you look as if you've sat on a beach and come out with this beautiful radiant complexion. This now um, you can buy direct from the retailer in France. When they stopped buying it in, uh, when they stopped selling it in boots, I used to buy it from France, then I would buy it direct from the retailer. I actually found these on eBay. I managed to buy three for two a couple of weeks ago, so I'm stocked up now for the summer. Um, and I'll leave them in a handbag, or I'll leave one maybe with my daughter Tijan, another with Lily, um, because it's an absolute dream of a product. Superb, amazing. As I said, get your hands on it if you can, because you won't regret it. Now, to go to one actually, which I am going to show you, even though I really don't like it, um, last summer when I was stocking up before I went away I needed to have another SPF which I was going to be comfortable with being waterproof because uh, although I don't sunbathe I will still sit in the sun with a hat on and of course I'll swim in the pool and go in the sea and I don't want the SPF to be washed straight off. So I had tried a um, Shiseido product, but the non-waterproof one, and it was really good, I loved it. It was sheer, it was the right uh, coverage, factor 50, 50 plus, and then I realized I'd actually picked up the wrong one and I needed the waterproof version. So I just grabbed the waterproof version and bought it without checking. And unfortunately, it's the age old white syndrome. So you put this on your face and you look like a ghost, uh, it takes a long time to sink in. It's very wet and watery. There's a really great product by Terry and it is called Tea to Tan and it's a wonderful um, pipette dispenser of brown liquid that you can just literally put onto your uh, palm of your hand and then rub all over your face and it gives you that glow as if you've been in the sun uh, because obviously when you've protected your face but perhaps the rest of your body has had a little bit of sun there's a discrepancy your face looks white um, and the rest of your body is darker so you need to get a little bit of color in and the way to do that is with tinted moisturizers or this product which I think is absolutely amazing I will photograph it and link it below um, and it smells amazing as well it's got that lovely rose scent that most of her products have I think all of her products have a lovely rose and the beauty about this as well, a lovely little um, bonus, is that there are two formulations. One is just the 
brown tint and then if you shake the bottle you get this lovely sparkle which you can use obviously later on in the day in the evening when you want a little bit more glamour so one product two functions smells amazing and the coverage is really really lovely it looks very strong when you first put it on and it looks as if you've kind of almost just dipped a tea bag or damp tea bag in some water, uh, in water and then just kind of painted your face with it um, but stick with it and you will enjoy the results it's a really really lovely product and believe me I've tried so many to try and get the colour balance between my face and the rest of my body when the summer is at its full height and I have got a, maybe a little bit of colour on my arms and my um, my chest here because you don't want to have that you know difference in colour so that's one I would highly recommend. So these products that I've shown you today I have trialled and used for many many years and I have brought to you the best of my bunch so I hope that you're going to be able to take those forward and use them. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover or talk about I'd love to hear your feedback and comments. I've had some really interesting suggestions and they're all noted and I will at some point go through them and hopefully make more videos that you request and the sort of content that you like. And if you've enjoyed it and then like if you like it, subscribe please as well and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!